By this time tomorrow, we'll have the latest rates decision from the Reserve Bank. It'll be the first under new Governor Michelle Bullock to look ahead to that decision and more. Let's bring in David Alexander. He is the Head of Policy Advocacy at the Chamber of Commerce and Industry. David, great to see you. Let's, before we get to the RBA and the rates decision, I want to ask you first of all about the that your argument when it comes to industrial relations. Your colleague, Andrew McKellar, wrote a piece in the newspaper today where he's basically saying that the government's got some great ideas on employment white paper and everything else, but it's meaningless if it delivers its proposed IR changes. What's so mm. wrong? Why is business so concerned about those laws? Yeah, thanks, Kieran. Look, I think the government did come out with a white paper last week on employment. Uh, a number of good measures in there, like... Um, a national skills passport, more funding for TAFE, uh, extending the pension work bonus. But as, you know, as useful as they might be, they are dwarfed by the impact of industrial relations changes that are occurring and are set to occur. So the government is really looking at a, another major suite of changes in industrial reforms. They're going to impact a whole large chunk of, chunk of the economy from labour hire changes, to casuals, to independent contractors, to union right of entry. And the net effect of each of these is to drag down productivity. And we're saying that loss of flexibility is really going to have a, an impact on the economy. And measures that might be worthy over here, they're just not going to cut it. It's, it's a very complex area. There's a lot of detail in this proposed bill from the, the government. It's called Closing the Loopholes, is what it's called now. Initially, it was called Same Job, Same Pay. Mm. Is essentially that... Is that the problem, as far as you see it, that that same job, same pay mentality for contractors or others is fine to say but difficult to deliver... When a business is dealing, say, with someone who's worked at a place for 30 years as opposed to someone who's been there six months? Yeah, we do see a, a big problem with that principle of, you know, same pay. Many different jobs have different pay levels because people have different experience levels or they're harder workers or there's different business conditions. Differences are not a bad thing. They're a good thing. In a modern economy, you want flexibility. You want to be able to adapt. You want your business to be able to meet the market, meet consumers. So even on that part of these reforms coming up, simply because there's the assertion of a loophole doesn't mean there really is one. One of the other areas the bill looks at is the area of gig economies, Uber drivers and so on. Isn't it be better that those sorts of workers get greater protection and support? Well, we think a critical part of these new tech platform, uh, they are a, a very important and dynamic part of our economy and we want them to thrive. But what they need is flexibility. You can see in America, they, they gather these enormous Silicon Valley kind of tech firms because they've got enormous flexibility. In Australia, if we start building in inflexibilities, rigidities, you're just going to scare away investment. So you might think you're doing a good thing, but in fact, you're actually snuffing out parts of the industry. And, and finally, on the RBA decision tomorrow, the first under the new governor, a lot of your members would be, would be doing it tough right now in the face of rising rates. They'd be concerned they'll go again. What's the, the general mood? Do you think they will move in her first meeting as the governor? Well, it is her first meeting and I don't think she'll be changing the Philip Lowe course, which is to try and bring inflation down as quickly as possible to the 2 to 3% band without throwing the economy backwards. So that's a, quite a fine line that they're, they're trying to manage. Businesses are feeling uh, in a pessimistic mood. Business conditions, we did a survey just in the last week or so, uh, business conditions, pretty flat for manufacturers, but the mood is, is pretty ordinary. So we do urge the Reserve Bank to take into consideration uh, the, uh, the, the, the conditions of business at the moment. Um, and, of course, they'll be looking at the broader consumer uh, aspect as well. And on, yeah, well, one of the challenges is while they're trying to achieve that, that very narrow path, mm. inflation 
in and of itself is already hurting people because mm. by its nature it, it means the cost of living is up, prices are up. So that's already smashing mm. people right now and businesses. That's right. So in a sense there's a timing aspect to this. The RBA will be thinking maybe there's short-term pain for longer-term gain. That's why they jacked up rates for a start. They've been bringing them down. Now they just don't want to see inflation pipe up again because that would further throw a spanner in the works of the medium term. So they're, they're trying to bring about the desired outcome as soon as they can. David Alexander from the Chamber of Commerce and Industry, thank you. As always, appreciate it. Thanks, Kieran.